This is a neat little panel that I added onto an AliExpress order. It's not that sophisticated, it's just LEDs and resistors and a little micro USB port. And the main point of it is that if you need a splash of light anywhere that you've got the access to a USB power supply, then you can just add the cable in and then just stick this up in the position and it will light up. Let me plug a USB cable in and light it up. So it has 20 LEDs in this version, but they also do versions with 8, 12, 16 or the 20 LED. And the power uh, it's dissipating is only about 2.5 watts. That's about, say, 500 milliamps at 5 volts. But that will depend on the quality of the cable you use and the length of the cable, the power supply's capability to supply the current and various other factors. But in general, uh, you could treat this as a 2.5 watt LED panel, but that's the total dissipation and the LEDs will just be a bit less, but it's still very useful. Let me show you. Well, let me show you lit. Uh, let me show you lit and actually lighting the bench. One moment, please. So now it is providing the illumination of the bench. It's not bad, is it? I mean, it's not super duper high levels, but you know what? That would be a fairly comfortable level to actually work with. It's not bad at all. OK, watch your eyes. The brighter light is coming back. And we're back with a picture of the circuit board that I have spent lots of time colouring like a small child. Um, it's notable that they've used as much of the copper as possible. There's a couple of reasons for that. It etches faster. It means that there's less copper pollution of the etchant at the factories, although they do usually recycle it. It's uh, usually copper chloride, I think, they use a lovely emerald green colour. And it's very recyclable. It's also because printed circuit board copper is high purity. Uh, companies that use copper chloride are very keen to get their hands on that. It's much cheaper than getting it from lab suppliers. So here's a slightly wonky USB port. It's micro USB. And uh, it doesn't look that well soldered on, to be honest. But maybe they've just compromised between the amount of time they spent soldering it and melting the plastic. But it is soldered on here, but you've also got the option of these two pads here, so you could run uh, a wire directly to this. And there is what looks like a couple of slots for a cable tie, but keep in mind if you did put a cable tie in, you couldn't then put it against a heat-absorbing surface, although there's probably enough room to use a double-sided pad on this. Although, really, it'd be better for the LEDs to have some sort of, you know, be mounted directly onto, say, a wooden surface or whatever, just purely because it will help at least take some of the heat away. There is a void pad here that's just basically filling space. The negative comes up here to that pad, goes round here, skirts round the positive, and then carries up onto the top where it is a large area negative supply to every single LED. There's also a hole at the top here, which came out black, which uh, I'll put it down here. There you go. That's the little hole uh, there. Uh, just so you know, there is a hole there, but keep in mind, it is flanked on all sides by the negative connections to USB. Not that that really matters too much. You know what does matter, though? Let me bring in the meter. Meter. Let's test continuity between the shell of the USB power supply, which I don't think is connected, and uh, the... Well, you know what? These leads... They're new leads, but they're not quite... Uh, you, I do them for something else because I like them, but they're not quite long enough for reaching that. That's annoying. I'll have to change them. Anyway, negative pad. Shell. No, it's not connected to the shell. That's good. Um, the resistors are 18 ohms, and it, the current is limited by the 18 ohm resistors to roughly 100 milliamps or so for the four LEDs. So each one is seeing about 25 milliamps. And then the copper track here, which I didn't colour in here, is basically the rest of this area, minus the little uh, cutout dam around it. So it's also helping couple the heat from the LEDs. Not that that's a huge issue because they are 25 milliamps. They're not being grilled like so much stuff does, running LEDs like this at between 50 to 100 milliamps. Um, and it's just basically copycat all the way except at the end here where they just ran that track right up to the end. Uh, it's a very simple layout. I could show you this schematic if you wish, but it's not going to be that exciting. It's just showing two sections of the five in use in that it's the usb power supply common positive rail 18 ohm resistor the leds in their 
parallel clusters of four and then going down to the zero volt rail. I'll show mark that zero volt rail. And this could be anything. Depending on the voltage your power supply puts out under load, depending on the cable, it could be up to five volts. Uh, suppose that if you really wanted, if you run this off a cable and you won't, didn't need the brightness, you could just stick a diode in, like a 1N4001 and uh, or 007 anything, one, one of the 1N400 series, and that would drop the voltage by about one volt, which would have a dramatic effect on this. Now I want to know what dramatic effect it would have on it. One moment, please. So at 5 volts, the current will be 560 milliamps. If it goes down to about 4 volts, let's uh, tweak it down to 4 volts, that'll do 3.97, it drops to 300 milliamps. What can, we, what can we go down to? Let's go a bit lower. Let's go to 3 volts. Well, uh, yeah, let's go to 3 volts. It's still lit. It's going to be nothing at 3 volts. It's 88 milliamps, so still actually useful at 3 volts. OK, that experiment is complete. Let's get back to the schematic. Back to the schematic. Not that there's much point. It is a very basic schematic. These connections going out to the other clusters. I shall zoom back out again. So it's a useful little thing. It didn't cost that much. It's one of these things that they have their choice option at AliExpress. You can just throw things into the basket. And once you've exceeded £10, the, the postage is free on them. And this added literally $1 to the cost. So it's a useful little module to have. I could imagine the preppers and off-grid people quite liking it as a little source of light. I'm also thinking that if you were to put a dab of silicon in the back, the adhesive, and stick it in the back of a LED floodlight, then you could convert that floodlight to 5 volt, just for areas where you wanted a rugged outdoor type light that was basically just low level illumination, but super rugged and uh, running the LEDs at very low power. But that's it. A nice, simple thing, uh, very useful, just pretty much something to stick in the kit bag as a useful source of light, say in the back of panels and stuff like that. Very neat little panel.